it says preparing, <clears throat> but I have no idea that I'm, I mean, I have no, no doubt that I'm live right now and it's just not showing me. So here we go. I just have to get in here and set everything up. Okay. I actually see a chat. I see that I can go in here and edit this. Let's talk about Etsy. <laughs> oh, Etsy, you're driving me nuts. I just wish that they would go ahead and make these changes that we all know are coming. And, you know, every time I, I start this, I say that because it's been like a month. It's been over a month that we know that they're going to be, I don't know, we'll have to wait. It's just irritating to know that, um, you know, they're, they're going to be doing some kind of a fee increase or whatever in some capacity. And we have to wait. The waiting kills you, right? And knowing that it's coming is the irritating part of it. Okay. It is two o'clock. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm going nuts. I'm going nuts waiting and you know, I, you know, whatever. I feel like I'm just kind of sitting here like waiting, waiting for something to happen. And the shoe is not dropping. The, I, I would say I wait for the other shoe to drop, but the first one hasn't dropped. Hi, Bill. Bill is our moderator and uh, you must obey Bill. His screen name is Holidays Lane. And if you haven't seen his shop, go get an ornament for yourself. He sells hand beaded, hand beaded ornaments. And uh, they look a lot nicer than the ones that I made using the kit that he sells. They, it looked, mine looked fine. It looked fine. I always say that it looked fine. It was just a little, you know, it was a little crooked, just a little bit. All right, so what's going on with Etsy this week is a lot of glitches as usual. We have heard of, um, people are still reporting. This is this has been going on for, for over a year at least that some listings that are supposed to have expired don't expire. They just, they don't expire. And it says they're supposed to have expired, but they haven't yet. <laughs> and they're just still there. And this, this could be like months that it says, oh, this should be expired and three months ago or four months ago or a year ago. So, you know, as long as you can, as long as you can find your listings in search results, that's okay. If it says that a listing should have expired or it did expire, but it's still showing up, as long as you can see it in search results, it's okay. But if you can't find it in search results at all, I would go ahead and renew it. So that's a weird thing because it might be showing up in your shop and not in search results. But if you can see it in search, then it's okay, even if it says it's expired. Okay. Um, what else? This was the week, I guess, I guess last week. Yeah, last week they started that you have to be signed into the Etsy forums or to, be, to get into the Etsy forums. And then people were signing in and they couldn't get in or they were signed in and the Etsy forums is like, you can't see this. So, yeah, you know, it's it's just, it, it's Glitch City over there. What else? Um, I'm trying to think what else. Helen says stuff is also not auto-renewing. Okay, so just go in there and check. You also might want to go in and check your shipping settings to make sure that they haven't turned your shipping on to Saturday and Sunday if you don't want that, because it, it looks like they were doing that to everyone automatically. So go ahead and make sure your shipping settings are okay. They're just in our shops. They have, Etsy has its busy little fingers inside our shops. And that's never good. That's never good. And um, yeah. So whenever they start doing that, you know, something's going to go wrong. And and things are, there's lots of glitches. But what else is new? You know, I mean, I, I start this every week with what have people been reporting? It's like, it's the same stuff every week. There's glitches galore. Glitches galore. We don't know. Um. Okay, so let me go over to the community tab and see. Now, if you are a member of the channel, you have a lovely purple star next to your name. And that is just to say, hey. I hear something going on out at my front door. And since I'm nosy, I'm listening. 
I don't know what's going on. My husband's talking to somebody. I don't know. Nobody ever comes here unless they're trying to sell us stuff. So they should leave because we're not buying. We're not buying anything from you, sir. I don't know what's going on. Oh, they were. Yeah, okay. Is somebody trying to sell us bug services? No, I like the bugs in my house. Actually, I don't, but we just got. We just got termite inspected, so whatever. Okay, let's go to the community tab. I was so distracted there for a minute. Um, I'm still I'm still distracted because I'm hearing this conversation behind me. Okay, first question. If you sell PDFs of a printable resource like workbooks and planner pages, which consist of original writing and designs, not PLR or stolen and copied, well, good for you, number one, that it's not stolen. Okay, what's a good way to make product mock-ups stand out? If it's a mock-up, you know, I think probably for digital, I would say that the best way to make product mock-up stand out is to not use a mock-up and actually have a photo of some of the printed pages where you can show the actual thing. Put your hand in them. Put your hand in the printed thing, right? Have a picture of your hand in it or have a video of yourself flipping through it. And that's probably the best way to do it because then it shows that you actually are taking, you're making an effort, you're trying. You're trying to do something a little bit different. Cause I think a lot of people who do the mock-ups just slap a mock-up up and they walk away and they're the cowbirds, right? And if you didn't see my, my uh, podcast last week, those are the cowbirds. The cowbirds do that cause they don't wanna take the time. So if you take the time and actually make a different type of mock-up by showing that it's not just you know, like the same papers on the same desk that everybody else uses, then that's probably your best bet. And take, if it's hundreds of pages, just take, print one out. It's advertising, right? Print one out and flip through it in the video. And you can actually do a video showing that you're printing it, it's printing out, and then you're flipping through it to show it's hundreds of pages. All right, next question. I've read that Pinterest takes six plus months to work in quotes, once you start to pin your listings and the pin should be posted at a certain time whenever your target audience is active to maximize visibility, maximize visibility. Can you please speak to this? The time thing doesn't matter. It used to be that Pinterest had a, like a time-based feed, like Instagram, where the things that are posted now are the ones that are shown. Um, it has a smart feed now, so it's more based on what the people have, are looking at themselves and, and your history. If you come in and start clicking on things, Pinterest will show you more of that. So as far as the uh, time of pinning, it's not a big as big a deal. I, I don't worry about what time I'm pinning things because it, it will be shown later, you know. And um, as far as it taking six plus months to quote unquote work, it can work faster than that, but it does take time. And I would say if you quit before eight to 12 months, then you haven't given it enough time to really get into the Pinterest groove because Pinterest is a search engine. I just did a podcast that will be up, I believe on Thursday. Uh, no, maybe next week, not this week. Oh, maybe it is this week. I don't know. I just did one where I'm talking about Pinterest and why I prefer it to the, the feeds that move and are gone after 24 hours. Um, and it takes a long time for people to, or for Pinterest to get enough information to show it to a lot of the right people. So you can't, and you can't speed it up. There are ways that you can make, okay. I will say that you can, you can kind of speed it up, but Pinterest has its own timeline and you can't force it. You can't force it to show your stuff faster. There are ways, which I talk about in my Pinterest class that you can encourage Pinterest to show your pins sooner to people, but that doesn't mean it's going to be shown faster than their timeline allows. So let's say that their timeline says, okay, four days, four to five days basically after something is pinned is when we're going to start having enough information about it to show it to people just on a regular basis. That four to five days, you can't change that, okay? But after that four to five days, it might get shown more often if you do the right types of keywords, if that makes sense, as opposed to just letting it kind of, um, you know, languish and wait for Pinterest to pick it up. You can kind of, if you keyword it correctly, you can kind of help Pinterest to know who to show it to faster. And then once it starts getting activity, it will work. But as far as the six months thing, yeah, that's pretty accurate. 
I'm doing a case study right now for a blog um, that didn't have a Pinterest account. And I'm on the, I'm right at the month four, like the end of month four. And it's gotten up to a certain point and it's starting to level off, but it's a food blog. So it's pretty seasonal. And I think as we go into the summer, when there's more people searching for picnic and barbecue ideas and that kind of stuff, there is a lot of content on this site about that. And I'm hoping that that gets picked up and starts to show up more often. But I would not say that four months is enough to say whether your Pinterest account is going to be successful or not, but you can see if it's increasing slowly, all right? Now, there are a lot of strategies being paraded around right now on YouTube about pinning so much that it's just ridiculous. Don't do that because Pinterest spam filters are also starting to be turned up and they will take you out. And yeah, it's these people who don't know how Pinterest works and they're just attacking Pinterest the same way they attack everything else, which is to just burn it to the ground and hope that it works. But if they get burned to the ground, they don't care. They just go on to the next thing. You don't want to do that. If you're building a Pinterest account for your business, you want it to be something that lasts. So do it the right way. And I do have a Pinterest class where you can, you know, take that. Uh, links in the description. It's under the teachable classes. And I think it says including my Pinterest class. Here's the link. So it's in the description of the video. Um, but the, I also have some Pinterest videos on my other channel, which is Kara Bunton Tutorials. So you can go look at that if you would like to do that. But there's a lot that goes into getting success on Pinterest and you have to give it time. And it's usually eight to 12 months before you can really see if it's going to work. But like I said, I just, I did, a, I don't remember if the podcast that I did because I've recorded a couple, ones for this week, ones for next week. One of them is going to be about why I, I prefer Pinterest in, instead of other types of social media. And Pinterest isn't social, which is one good thing about it. You don't have to be social. Okay, next question. I've sold several items recently where I've lost a fair bit of profit to the offsite ad fees. Yeah. Is it better to switch off offsite ads altogether? I sell vintage prints from old books and sell them at around eight to 10 pounds. So the charges from offsite ads pretty much wipes out what profit I do make. Yeah, and if you're in the UK, if you're selling in pounds, then you probably have more fees because there's, you know, different types of fees. There's the, the VAT tax and all that is on top of it. So you're not gonna sell as much because people are paying more tax. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I know there's currency conversion fees. There's little regulatory fees that are thrown in there. And the offsite ad fee on top of that can really wipe you out. It's not good. And so then goes on to say, if I switch them off, do I lose all of the traffic from Google or other search engines outside of Etsy? If I don't switch them off, would it be better to increase my prices to cover any such losses? Um, yeah, and then you're worried about charging too much. I would say that yes, number one, regardless, increase, if you have offsite ads turned on, you need to increase your prices to add that cost in because it's possible that every single sale you make is going to be from an offsite ad and you have to account for that. So definitely take that into account with your pricing. And you don't ne necessarily need to increase every single thing, you know, 12 to 15%. Let's say that you've got 10, let's say you have 10 sales on average and two of them on average are from offsite ads. We'll figure out how much that fee is and then divide it amongst the 10, you know, sales that you get so that you're not increasing the price on everything 12%, but you're just kind of spreading it out. And that's just kind of mitigating your risk a little bit. It's never going to be completely accurate though. So it might end up that that's not a good way to do it. And you might decide to turn the ads off. Okay. If you do decide to turn the ads off, you will probably lose the traffic from offsite ads, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to be shown in other places on outside search engines. It's just that Etsy won't be advertising your listings as much because I'm sure that they put a priority on offsite ads. Now, something else to be aware of, and I've just started running into this a lot, is that recently, and I, I did a video about this on my tutorials channel, Recently, Etsy recategorized their affiliate program in the AWIN program, which is the one that I'm in, for bloggers, as every blogger is now a publishing partner, quote unquote. And about two or three years ago, it was a while back, they, they said that certain publishing partners would be considered part of the offsite ads program. And those were big websites. It was like Martha Stewart and... Um, 
I can't think of the other ones, you know, just some, some big, big corporate websites that were using Etsy affiliate links would be considered offsite ad partners. So that if you got a click from there, then you would be paying that 12 to 15%. Well, now every AWIN blogger is a publishing partner. So for example, if, if I'm, and I'm, I just have a little blog, right? I have a little website that has some Etsy affiliate links on it, but if anyone uses an affiliate link on my site, they, the, the person that they buy from, you know, is, as long as it fits the offsite ad criteria, they do pay that 12 to 15%, even if it comes from my website, which is not that big. And they have it made it more attractive for bloggers to use people who are in the offsite ad programs as people to link to because they have a page where we can go and find out if someone is in or out of offsite ads. So let's say I'm thinking I'm going to write an article about Easter bonnets and I'm going to see what I can find on Etsy to put affiliate links in so that if someone clicks on my link in my website article and buys something on Etsy, I'll get a payment. Okay. If I go to their little portal, I can put the shop name or the listing into this little form and it will come up and say, yes, this person is a member of offsite ads. So you get paid more if you use that link. And if it says, no, they're not in offsite ads, then people aren't going to use that link if they can find someone who is. So basically it's, I mean, it's nothing, it's nothing different as far as you being advertised somewhere and paying for it. That's basically you're paying for an ad, whether you like it or not. Okay. Now, if you can turn that off, then you can turn it off if you feel like it. And you can see if that, if that drops your sales a lot, but if you're getting almost all of your, all of your sales from offsite ads, I wouldn't turn it off. I would just increase your prices because that would probably get rid of a lot of your sales, right? Because if that's where you're getting your sales from. Now, if you're getting one out of 10 sales, it's not that big a deal. And you might want to try to turn it off to see if it matters or not. But if it depends really on how many sales you're getting from offsite ads, because you don't want to cut off the source of all of your sales. And if that's offsite ads, then you want to keep that up. So it's really something you have to figure out for yourself, but there is more of an incentive now than there was even six months ago, maybe, is when they made this change. I'm very bad with remembering when things happened. It always seems like it's last week, but then it'll be, oh, that was two years ago. Like, I don't know. Um, but it was it was a while back they made this change where now every blogger that uses links to Etsy that are affiliate links can get paid more if you use someone who is enrolled in offsite ads. And I've noticed that I'm getting more clicks from offsite ads because bloggers who are linking to my products are probably choosing my shop because I am opted into offsite ads and I can't get out of it. And I don't like it. I don't like it, but that's that's just how the system is set up. So, all right. And you can just raise your price if that's the case. All right. Next question. I noticed when listing one of my prints that in the new listing template, there's a box for adding image alt text. Now that's been here for a while. The alt text thing has been there for a while. Okay. And that's to add alt text to the images in your listings. Um, she says, I know this is good for people with visual impairments. That's, and she says, that's a good enough reason to add it. Yes. Okay. But do you think it's as good for SEO as they say? No. And I'll tell you why in a minute. I have a Shopify store too, and I add alt text there, but never know just how effective it is for SEO. Okay. Alt text is not specific. It's not intended for SEO. Okay. Alt text is a, a piece of, it just, it's just like a description of what's in the picture. And the reason that it's there is for people who are visually impaired. They can't see the picture. They're using screen readers. So a picture will come up and it will tell them what's in the picture because the screen reader is reading the alt text that you have put in. That's really good if the person needs to see that picture and if that picture contributes something that is different or like it's not, if, if, if the person is going to miss some information because they don't know what's in that picture, then it's good to have the alt text there. Okay. The, the thing about e-commerce alt text is that, it's been, and on Etsy specifically, if you don't have alt text on the photos, then Etsy by default uses the title of the listing for that alt text. That's That works if 
the alt text just describes what's in the photo. And like, if your title is what's in the photo, then that's fine. You don't really need to put the alt text in there. It will get picked up. What happened is that when people realized that Google reads the alt text in order to help identify what the photo is, because they use photos on Google in search results and images, um, that it can help you with SEO on, on Google. It doesn't matter for Etsy, okay? But um, what, what happened is people started using the alt text for stuff that is not intended, and they would just jam a whole bunch of keywords in there. And it just is, it's irritating. If you have a screen reader and you're using it, and my best friend's husband is blind and he uses a screen reader and it pisses him off because he'll come across these things where people have just jammed as many keywords as they can because they, they're trying to game the system by sticking a whole bunch of keywords in where it shouldn't be. So if you have, let's say there's a picture of a cake with a happy birthday cake topper on it, okay? The alt text should be something like, birthday cake with cake topper on top. That's it. Okay. But people will go in there and put happy birthday cake topper, birthday cake, birthday cake decor, birthday cake decorations. And the screen reader is going to read all of that. So it becomes this hot mess where these, these people who are trying to use a screen reader and just get through it, right, are being subjected to listening to all this junk because people are trying to game the system using the alt text. And it's very annoying. And if it is the same thing that's in the title, then they have to let the screen reader go through all of that. And then it's going to read the title anyway. So it's just repetitive, it's redundant, and it doesn't help. Now, I have websites where, like, on my, I was just putting some gingerbread house articles up on this one website. And it would be a picture of, like, the, art, the, the article is called something like, Can You Preserve a Gingerbread House? Okay. So what people will do is they'll go in there and they'll put, can you preserve a gingerbread house? How to preserve a gingerbread house? And they'll fill it up with nonsense when it should say gingerbread house with clear sealant being applied because that's what's in the picture. So if you're going to use alt text, do it the right way. Don't be a pest to these people who have to rely on screen readers. It's, it's not helpful. It's just not. And if you're putting what's in the picture in the picture, in the alt text, then that's all you need to do. Don't try to game the system. The title is there, the description, the tags are there. If you're talking about a website, it's the same thing. Don't try to game the system on SEO by jamming up stuff up in the pictures in the alt text for the pictures, because that's obnoxious. And just keep it as short and simple as it needs to be. It doesn't have to be super descriptive. The one time on Etsy where it could be helpful is if you have pictures where it's like an infographic and it has colors or it has information that you want customers to know. And if you actually put the alt text, like if that alt text has that information in it, then that could be helpful for people. But again, it's not, it's not necessary if it's in the description. And there's a whole, there's a whole, it's a very gray area with e-commerce listing photos because you don't have to put alt text in a picture if it doesn't contribute something different to the article or the page that it's on. And you actually can take double quotation marks and put that in the alt text to tell the screen readers to skip that image and to just go straight to the text. So if it's something that is like the same picture, if it's the same birthday cake topper from five different angles, I wouldn't want to have somebody have to go through all that. So I would probably just put the double quotation marks if I was going to do it, and then it would skip right to the title. So don't use alt text for SEO is basically the answer, okay? Try try to be helpful. It will help in the long run. It helps it helps Pinterest it helps Google to figure out what it is. I was just talking about Pinterest before, it helps Google to figure out what the picture is. And Google knows that it's in your website about, it's in a listing photo for that thing. It's in an article about that thing. So it knows what it's related to. But if you tell it what's in the picture, that could be helpful and it might show up in more places also. Okay, but Etsy doesn't use it for anything. It's just, you know, it's not, it doesn't help on Etsy and it can be, it can be misused and abused for Google so that's my answer to that. That was a long answer, wasn't it? Yeah, the alt text is weird because um, it, it is very, 
I think I'm trying to think it's like if it's a decorative image, there's a specific word for it. Like this, this picture doesn't contribute anything more than is in the information already. You don't have to use alt text. So anyway, um, and basically Botanical says, I was just going to say it might go back and add it to your info card images. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing, like if you want someone to sign up, if there's a thing that says sign up for my email list and get 20% off, that's the kind of thing that you might want to go and put in the alt text if you want them to read that. And if it's not anywhere in the listing description, that might be helpful because then they know they can sign up, you know. And my friend's husband just basically says, would you come over here and tell me what this is? Because he doesn't want to listen to all that crap. He just gets tired of people jamming stuff in there. He's not interested. He's like, just tell me what this is. And then she has to go over and tell him what's in the picture. Okay. That's all the questions that we have in the community tab for members. If you asked your question late and I skipped it, then it means you asked it late. And I have a time limit. So if I've started the live and you go and add, you know, add your question to the queue, it's not going to happen. You just wait till next week or just ask it in the chat. So if you have a question and you want to talk about something specific about Etsy, just put question at the top. <laughs> That's Bill's new question. Question time. Lots of question marks. Um, yeah, just put question in big capital letters at the front so that I can easily at a glance see that it's a question. But I can't think of anything else that is going on that we need to discuss. Um, I think somebody earlier, somebody up in the other, like, I think I saw this in the chat, had asked when did they start, if they started the $15 thing. Yeah, they started that last month, I thought. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know when it started, but it has started. So if you're going to start a new Etsy shop now, you're going to have to potentially, I think it'll probably be everybody at some point, but you're gonna have to pay $15 for identity verification. You're going to have to upload identity verification documents and it will slow the scammers down to a certain extent. So, and people are like, well, they can fake that. It's like, yeah, but part of it is you have to send a picture of yourself, like a selfie of you and your ID. And I'm sure they can fake that, but it won't be as easy. And it might make people just go, ah, I don't want to take the time. So we'll see. Okay, question. Uh, how long after, boy, the sun just came through and blinded me. Oh, how long? I usually block this door. I have a glass door right here, and I usually put the screen up in front of it. I just forgot. Oh, my God. How long after raising prices would you know to, to see if it has impacted your listing quality score or to see if the market can bear it? Well, you're going to be able to tell right away if people stop buying it. Right. And if you if you raise your prices and your your sales come to a halt, then you know that the market can't bear it. Um, but the listing quality score, there's more than just prices that go into that. So that's that's the kind of thing that you you don't know what the listing quality score is. Nobody knows what the listing quality score is. They don't tell us. It's all the most obvious factors. Probably the biggest thing is does it sell? Uh, so if your sales do slow down, then that'll probably impact the listing quality score, but we'll never know for sure. And they they're never going to tell you what your listing quality score is because that's not anything that they reveal. Um, but you'll be able to tell right away if you if you raise your prices and suddenly everything stops, then you know that that's too much. So what you could do, and a lot of people have a lot of people do this. I've talked about this before. You just raise it a little bit, raise it a little bit more if nothing happens. If nothing happens, you can raise it a little bit more. And eventually you're going to get to a point where your sales do slow down and you can back off. So you know that, that when your sales slow down, that's when it's too high for what the market will bear. And you can back it down to the last price. Okay. And a lot of people do it that way just because that's a good, that's that's like live testing. <laughs> that's a good way to see at what point do people stop buying? And then you can just back off a little bit. And that's all. Okay. Um Anything else? Oh, another question. Question. I have to block the sun. Oh, my God. If I've noticed views and favorites already in my last year's Halloween bestseller item, should I start already posting the Halloween items? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. People buy Halloween all year round. I, I don't ever take seasonal stuff out. I have seasonal stuff in my shop that sells year round. I don't know why. I mean, be, people buy things at different times of the year. And if you don't have it listed, they can't buy it. 
So I would go ahead and, and I mean, if obviously you've noticed views and favorites. So yes, I would go ahead and post everything. Um, and I just never let it, never let it expire. Just keep it up. Yeah. I don't see, I mean, I, I see people have, people have that question. When should I list my seasonal items? I'm like, when do you unlist them? I, I list everything. I leave everything up. So that's not really a question for me. Just leave it up. Okay. Question. Etsy, Etsy seller support. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a, that's kind of a Etsy seller support. That is what, what is the word for that? It's an oxymoron, right? Okay. Anyway, it's about to get a lot worse as Etsy opened the door to China. Now that, okay, look, and we'll, we'll be flooded with millions of new sellers from China. What is your advice to existing sellers? My advice to existing sellers is to not be swept up in this, in this freak out that seems to be happening. I've seen this mentioned a few times. Etsy, I believe that Etsy had payment. This is, this is an Etsy payments related thing. That before Etsy processed their own payments, Etsy payments is what you have to use now. Okay. So when they started processing their own payments, they actually took a bunch of countries out of the queue of countries that could sell on Etsy. And China was one of them. There were other ones too, right? And as they've been adding Etsy payments to more countries, they're adding them back in. And China happens to be one of them. And I remember years ago, I want to, I want to say it was about five years ago. Again, I could be wrong because I'm really bad with timelines. It could be 15 years. I don't know. Um, there was a person who was in one of my groups who was in China and she had a, a shop that sold kimonos and she has, I guess that she was not able to sell on Etsy when they changed the Etsy payments. And now I guess she'll be able to sell again. So this is not something to freak out about. I have seen people freaking out about it. I think it's just because it's China. And I totally understand that. But if you guys are worried about scammers from China, where have you been? Because they're on Etsy already. Okay. And this is this is really just a payment thing, as far as I can see. There's nothing nefarious about it. It's just Etsy opening Etsy payments up to China, as well as other countries. If you go and look, they've been adding countries back into the list. So it's nothing to worry about. Um, I have no advice for anyone. It's not, it's not going to, I mean, if we're worried about Chinese scammers, they're on the site already. So there's there's really nothing to do about that. Um, okay, uh, just make sure I'm not skipping something. All right, question. Is it still okay to duplicate listings to put in a second appropriate category within the same shop? Yes, as long as you can sell both. If someone comes along and buys both of them and you can sell both, then that's fine. And it's so obviously like one of a kind things, you can't do that too. Vintage items, if you only have one of them. But if it's something that you're making and you can make more than one, then that's perfectly fine. Yes. Okay. Question, how come there are shops on Etsy that have low quality pictures, poor titles and descriptions, but have tens of thousands of sales from their shop? Anything is possible. There's a lot of scammers on Etsy. There's a lot of fake sales on Etsy. There's a lot of people on Etsy who are sending people directly to their listings from their email list. A lot of times they're not even going through um, et Etsy search at all. And if they're sending direct traffic to their shops, then you don't need to worry about the quality of your listings on Etsy because you're not using the Etsy system. You're just using Etsy as a cash register. They could be selling things in person and using Etsy as a cash register because there is that thing where you can, you know, integrate the on, on in-person sales. So who knows? That That's something that we don't know. But the fact is that if you sell on Etsy, then Etsy will show your listings more and that could just keep the sales going. Um, but you, you never know. And a lot of times people will say, oh, I have so many. Look, I'm not saying this is the case for these shops because I don't know who you're talking about. Um, there are a lot of people online who fake things. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if I'm telling you something you haven't known already. But people fake a lot of stuff online. Okay. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and it took, it took me a while to figure this out because like you see YouTube videos, there was, okay, there was someone on YouTube who's now not on YouTube anymore, apparently. Um, but when, when they were posting a lot of videos, they had lots and lots and lots of subscribers and they would have hundreds of comments immediately after posting a video. 
And I would always think, how is that happening? Like, I mean, this is like instantaneously after posting a video. And then I realized they're buying comments, right? There's someone I watch on now, now on, on YouTube and he's like, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to get that little, you know, that silver play button where you get a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube and they send you a special plaque and they have people have it hanging behind them. You can buy, basically buy that by running ads and buying subscribers for your channel. And then when you go to a hundred thousand, you stop running ads and they send you the plaque and you hang it up and everybody's like, Ooh, look at that. Everything can be faked. All right. So I don't know what's going on with a shop that has terrible pictures. It could be that they have an excellent marketing team off. They're running ads that go straight to Etsy. I don't know. It could be that they're buying from themselves. I don't know. There's a lot of chicanery that goes on, on online in general. And at Etsy, I have seen, there was, I, I, I want, so I, I'll leave this for a podcast. I'll talk about faking stuff in a podcast because I have a really good story about that. It's a really good story. Okay, question. Uh, oh, wait, I, I don't want to skip. Da, 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 da. Are you guys still talking? Okay, wait, duplicate listings shop. There's another question about China. I answered that. It's not going to affect sellers. It's, why, why does, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious now, because this is the second thing about Etsy support being affected. Why would Etsy opening up Etsy payments to China affect Etsy seller support? I'm genuinely curious because this is the second comment that's asked that. So if you want to post your response to that, like, why do you think that would affect Etsy seller support? I don't see why that, well, I don't see how those two things are related. So let me know in the chat um, and put question in front of it, and then I'll read it. Because I'll know that that's, you know, something to answer. But I don't, why would that affect Etsy seller support? It can't get worse. It can't get any worse. Um, anyway, I, I have a feeling that someone is online in a Facebook group with some kind of tinfoil hat theory about that. But I don't know. I'm not worried about it. Anyway. Okay, question. I have a vintage shop and I want to make my own website. How do you think I should list my items, same items, both on Etsy and Shopify or some on Etsy, some on Shopify? It depends on how you want to keep track of it, because if somebody comes and buys it on Etsy and they buy it on your website, what are you going to do? So it might be easier to just have two separate sets of inventory and then you know, just not have to worry about running over and canceling the Etsy one. So if somebody comes to Shopify and buys something, if you also have it listed on Etsy, you have to run over there and cancel it right away, just deactivate it. Um, but if if that has happened where people will go from Etsy to my website, if I'm low in stock on something, they'll buy one thing on Etsy and then they'll go directly to my website and buy the same thing so they can get more of it. So you have to be really careful if you have things double listed and you can't fill both orders. So I personally would probably have different things listed in each place and just do it that way because I don't want to have to keep up. But if you think you're going to be really fast and you can run over and deactivate things before someone goes and buys the second item that doesn't exist, that's up to you. I personally would do different inventory in each place. And that will, of course, split your inventory up. So, you know, and I think some things will sell better on Etsy and some things will sell better on your website. You'll, you'll figure that out. Okay, question. What's the best way to do Pinterest SEO research for artists when starting out? Um, probably use the uh, Pinterest search bar just to get an idea of what people are looking for and take my Pinterest class. Yeah, I mean, I've got so much in there. Oh my God. It, it Yeah. Uh, I am going to be doing more Pinterest videos over on my other channel, but the Pinterest search bar is the best place to start. And you, you can go down rabbit holes on Pinterest where you're just looking at terms and seeing what comes up. And then you click on something else and see what comes up and just write down what comes up. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. And I see Justina says, I meant brand new Halloween items. I obviously have my Halloween Christmas items up year round. Okay. I never deactivate them. Good. Yeah. I would go ahead and list them. As soon as you have things ready, I would list them. Just don't, don't even hold on to them, list them because people will buy them. People buy things, not just for the holiday. They'll buy things for whatever reason they want them. But if you don't have it listed, you can't sell it. So I would go ahead. Okay. Question. How can someone fake sales on Etsy? How does that even work? It can be done. 
and I don't want to get into it because the scammers don't need any help. Okay. And, you know, don't do it. If you have some, if you have some interesting, um, idea and some concept about how you're going to go fake some sales, don't do it. Uh, it can get your account shut down. And I have seen accounts get shut down for it. I will talk about something that somebody was doing in a podcast because that's, it was a long story and it was a good story, but it was a good example of how you can get your shop shut down for no reason. Etsy shut my shop down for no reason. And I know that they do shut shops down for no reason, but there's usually a reason. And if people are doing that kind of thing that I'm thinking about, then that was the reason. All right. Um, okay. Question because Etsy support is already suffering. They're overloaded. Well, they're under train too. Anyway, Starla Moore's video talked about it today. I don't watch anybody else's videos. Um, there's no, just because they're opening. Yeah. I mean, that's, I oh, was that the reason with, with the thinking that the support that's, that's a little fear mongering. I think, um, I don't think that it's going to be I don't think it's going to be a big deal, period. I Yeah, it's just opening up China to, et to Etsy payments. That's all. It's not going to suddenly have millions of shops coming in from China. Like I said, they're here already. And they're not, they're not calling Etsy support because they don't care. If someone is a scammer, and I think that's the, see, the implication is if it's a, it, I think people are, people are nervous. You see, you hear China and everybody freaks out. I understand that. But if you're worried about China scammer shops, they're not calling Etsy support. So there's not going to be any, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Basically, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Um, question. Does anyone know of plugins that co connect Etsy and independent shops? I know Shopify has a lot of plugins and apps, but I don't, uh, but don't use it. So not sure it would help with inventory management though. I think there is something I, uh, if anybody knows, just post it in the in the comment um, in the chat because I know that there is an inventory management system for handmade sellers. I don't know if it if it integrates with Etsy and other places, and I can't remember the name of it, so I'm not going to be very helpful on this one. But I'm sure that somebody in the chat does know. Oh wow, now it's going to bother me. That's going to bother me until someone says the name of it in there. It's a program. It's is it trunk? I it might be trunk. I think it's a different one that I'm thinking of though. Um, there might be a couple inventory management systems for handmade sellers. Ah, uh, I think trunk is one of them, but I that's not the one that I'm thinking of. Shuttle maybe shuttle. That's it. That's for inventory, right? And that's that's in sh shuttle shuttle sinks inventory. I think it's probably shuttle is the one because that sounds familiar to me. Um, that syncs inventory between Etsy and Shopify. Lisa says, um, Emily says it works with Shopify. Jan says trunk. A couple people, Marlena said trunk. So try both of those. And that, that those might be options. I don't know what else they integrate with though. If you're looking for something that's not Shopify, I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Question. You mentioned you have a Pinterest tutorial. I have so... I have a Pinterest class, which is $39 and you're in it forever. You get all the updates. Oh, and that reminds me, if you're in my monthly membership, I am currently updating the blogging section and I'm adding some more videos. So go over and check that out. And that's about blogging for product-based websites. Um, but yeah, I'm adding more videos to that section. So I wanted to mention that, but my Pinterest class is if you, if you get my class, your brain will explode and you'll think that I'm crazy for only charging $39 for it, FYI. But I do have some tutorials about Pinterest on my tutorials channel, which is Kara Bunton Tutorials. I, I might be adding some more, but it depends. I just have so much in the class and Pinterest is a lot more tricky than you think. It's simple, but it's also tricky. So I go over all the tricks in the class. Okay. Um, and then the next question about that was, let me see, is your Pinterest course suitable, workable for US, UK sellers? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
See, most most Pinterest classes are for people who have websites that are just blogs. And all you're trying to do is get people to go to your website. And the problem that we have as, as physical product sellers is that you have to get them then to take the next step of buying something from you. So that's it's part of that. But it's it's really about how to build your Pinterest account. And it doesn't matter where you're located. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. Oh, Crafty Base. That's another one. Crafty Base is another inventory system. And you're just going to have to look to see, um, you know, which one suits your needs. Because I don't know anything about any of these, specifically like what they integrate with and what they work for, but just go and, you know, check all of them. Okay, question. Okay, maybe not Etsy support, but Etsy bots going nuts even more. Um, no, I, this, okay, no, I, why, why would they go nuts even more? I, this, this is the kind of thing that I, I really, this is kind of a non-issue to me. I, and maybe other people have reasons why they're freaking out about it. Don't worry. Okay. Don't let things, don't let things scare you. Just don't, because most things, when you, when you back off and take a breath, it's not as bad as people want you to think they are. And I don't know why you would, I don't know. I don't know why people would want you to think that's a bad thing. Um, because honestly, this is, this is for people, they're, they're just reopening Etsy payments. They're letting Chinese sellers who are people like us, they're working from their homes. <laughs> I don't, you know, they're selling things. Maybe they're making things. I don't know. The Alibaba sellers are there already. This is not, the scammers are not super excited about this because they're already on Etsy. They don't care. They they have ways around it. This is a change for people who are independent artists like us who want to sell things and make a living online. And it's just Etsy payments. That's all, you know. And I'm sure I'm going to get some comments about how wrong I am. Okay, whatever. But if you if y'all want to freak out, go right ahead. I'm not. I don't care. I'm being more concerned. I mean, there's other countries that they're opening up to Etsy payments that are more concerning to me for different reasons. <laughs> but not not in this situation. It's just opening Etsy payments to different countries bit by bit, and they've been adding different countries. I think just when they hit on China, everybody. And I, like I said, I understand why everybody has a freak out because it's China. Anyway. Um, Okay, let's see. Question. I got the 20% off your next two orders coupon Sunday. Did all sellers and buyers get that? No, that sounds like something that Etsy might have sent out. And if it's off your next two orders on Etsy, then that's an Etsy coupon. And they did say they were going to be trying more of those, like Etsy sponsored sales, Etsy sponsored coupons to try to get people to come back and buy again. Because Etsy's goal that they've stated is to get sell or to get buyers who have purchased on Etsy, but haven't purchased more than once in a certain time period to come back and buy again, because they're trying to train people to shop on Etsy. And they're trying to train people to think of Etsy as a place to get gifts because they know that people buy gifts throughout the year. And that's really the big push for gift mode. Um, and that's, that would make sense if they're sending out a coupon for 20% off your next two orders, because they want people to come back. And then what they can do during the investor presentations is say, look at how much we increased the, you know, people coming back to buy, to buy. And I think they have, they have different names. There's like occasional buyers, habitual buyers, um, reactivated buyers. They have different names for people who have purchased within certain time periods and they, they want to increase people coming back and buying again. So that's probably an Etsy sponsored coupon. I doubt that everybody got it, but it's probably just to encourage you to come back and buy again. Okay. Question. What day of the week are the Pinterest lives? The Pinterest lives are usually on Monday. However, if nobody posts, I post a question, I post a thread in the Facebook groups for each of my classes. And I do lives for Pinterest, my weekly or my monthly membership and my eShop group. And the eShop group is closed. So you can't get in. Don't try. Um, that's, it's only the only way you can get in is if you know someone who's in the group and they refer you in. Okay. Cause that way I don't have to screen people and I'll let them refer their friends. But the, the, the monthly membership and is on Wednesdays. I do lives there. And the Pinterest class is on Mondays. I do lives there. 
and I post, I post a thread in both groups. And what I'm doing now is if nobody posts any questions, I'm canceling the lives because apparently nobody needs to know anything. And this kind of acts as an agenda for us so that we know what we're going to be talking about. And I realized that I would tell someone who is in my position to respect their time. And if no one feels like they need to post anything ahead of time, then why are you not respecting your own time? And I'm taking my own advice, basically. I'm learning to take my own advice. So, but it's usually Monday for Pinterest and Wednesday for the week for the monthly membership. It's a weekly live. I keep wanting to say the weekly membership, but it's monthly. Okay. Um, let's see. Question. I guess I'm in, I guess I'm worried because I sell digital items. I've been a graphic designer all my own and I work hard to create my printables. I understand that. And I'm sure you're, you're referring to the China getting opened up to Etsy payments. They're already stealing your stuff, right? It could be more people will be stealing it, but that's going to happen regardless. And it's not only the people in China who are stealing them. There's plenty of people in the US who are stealing them. There's plenty of people all over the world who are stealing other people's stuff. And it's, you know, it. if you go and look at the list of countries that Etsy has been in, increasingly adding into the Etsy payment system, it's worldwide. And scammers are worldwide. Content thieves are worldwide. It's not only China. It's, you know. And like I said, they're on Etsy already. They just funnel their money through different payment systems. They're not taking, they're, they're saying that their bank is in the U.S. and then they're funneling the money out, you know. It's it it's a little. I I understand why the word why the concept of Chinese business does that to us because I don't like it either. Right? I don't like the scammers, and a lot of them are the Timu people, whatever. However, it's not going to change that much because it's already on Etsy now. Okay. Um, Okay, question. Is your Pinterest live on its own YouTube channel? Could you give us the link, please? No, the live is on Zoom and the link is in the class. So that's where it is. Okay. How many days ahead of the live do you put up the thread for adding questions? One day. I could put it up ahead of time. I have to go in and schedule a whole bunch. I could put it up a couple days. Um, I've been scheduling it just the day ahead so that I don't lose it. But because, you know, they get lost in the thing. I, I'll put it up a couple days ahead. Okay. Um, I think that's all the questions so far. I'm just, I'm just scrolling. I'm scanning up to see if there's anything else. Yeah. Nope, I don't see anything. We're at 2.51. Nine minutes until the three o'clock time check. So if you have any other questions, please post them. In the meantime, give this video a thumbs up while we're waiting. It does help my channel. And it helps this video get seen by more people. The best thing you can do to help someone's channel on YouTube is to refer the channel to people or send them the video. Send them the video and tell, send your friends. Don't send your enemies. Don't send your competition. If you have a friend who sells on Etsy and who needs some help, send them here. Okay. Don't send them to people who are going to scare them. Don't send them to scary channels. You know, and I, I actually did a live on my Kate channel this morning. And um, I, before I did that, it was about selling cake decorations online. Before I did that, I did the same types of searches to see what kinds of things came up on like starting cake business from home, that kind of stuff. It's the same stuff. It's like, I could make $1,000 a, a day on my cake business from home. And I'm like, oh, come on. It's the scam. It's just ridiculous. The scammers are everywhere. PLR, what does PLR stand for? It's like something labeling, private label rights or something. It's basically templates, you buy templates and then you can customize them a little bit or you can just sell them. And people do that and you know what, like I'll, I'll buy a template for a, a dot, like, you know, the dot journals with the dotted pages. And then you could just make a booklet out of that. You don't have to design it yourself. People buy PLR, private label rights. Yeah. Um, it gives you the right to sell the content and maybe put, like people will buy the whole journal or a calendar or something and they'll put a picture on it. And then they say they designed it. It's private label rights. It's like white labeling. It's white labeling for printables, basically. 
or I guess physical products, you can do physical products too with it, but it's basically the, the content, it, the content is done for you and then you just customize it a little bit. Okay. Um, question, do you know if you can print more than one return label from an order? I don't. Um, if you, if it, it turns out that you can't, you can always go to usps.com and do it and, and get a second label, or you can go to pirate ship or, you know, Shippo. I've changed from Shippo to pirate ship now because Shippo is starting to charge you after you pay for 30 labels in a month, they will charge you a fee. No. So, but yeah, I'm not sure if you can buy more than one return label. I would think that you can, but I don't know for sure. So I'm not sure. Okay, question. How can I protect my shop from scammers and copycats? You can't. Um, I design printables so they're digital downloads. You really can't. You really can't. And um, unfortunately, that's just the reality of how printables work. Because if someone is a dirtbag and they're going to steal your work, they're going to do it. And that's that's a problem, but it it is what it is. And you can drive yourself crazy going and trying to figure out who has stolen your stuff, or you could just accept that it's going to be stolen and go keep making stuff. And I just did a podcast about, you know, the cowbirds and it's undercutters, but it's really the same kind of thing where people will steal your work. They underprice you. There's not a whole lot that you can do about it. You can spend your whole day filing DMCAs, which may or may not work. Um, because a lot of them know how to fight a DMCA with fake DMCA counterclaims. You know, I mean, it's it's just, it's a mess. Anything that's printable is going to be stolen. You just have to assume that. So if you, I, I've, I told like when my daughter was in high school, she was thinking about selling some of her artwork because she's really good. But I told her, if you are emotionally attached to something, don't put it online because it will be stolen and then you will be upset. And that's the best advice I have because it's going to get stolen. People steal things because they're dirt bags. You know, there's really not a good way to protect anything, unfortunately. And I saw, I think I was talking about this in the Cowbirds thing. Like somebody said that someone bought her entire shop and then uploaded it to their own website. And I'm assuming that they were all digital listings. And the fastest way to copy digital listings is to buy them and then upload them. And it's always going to happen. It it unfortunately that's just the way that it is. Unfortunately, um, okay. Question: Do you have a YouTube class? I used to, and I don't anymore. I don't anymore. Sorry. And I think I have some stuff about YouTube in the monthly membership. We, yeah, I do. I I think I took a lot of actually I took a lot of the YouTube class and put it in the monthly membership. So it's in there. And the monthly membership is about driving traffic. It's like traffic driving to wherever you want it to go. So that's that's why I have the YouTube in there. Okay, question. If you print a label from Pirate Ship, does it have to be used right away? You can, it's, um, would it be a problem for return labels because you don't know when the customer will send it? No, labels don't have to be used right away. Sometimes the post office gets snitty about it. But as long as the postage is there and the rates haven't changed, then you can use the label. It's like buying a stamp, right? They want to know, though, it's not probably not going to be a good thing to take a label in for a month after you buy it. But if they just take it and put the label on something and put it in a mailbox, who's going to stop them, right? It, I, and you can change the date. Like if you think that um, they're not going to send it for another two days, change the date. But I would just go ahead and buy it. And on Pirate Ship, you can, there, there is a way that I have to do a video about Pirate Ship because it actually has more functionality than Shippo did. I kind of like it. Uh, but you can actually send somebody the digital file and you can, you know, you can print it, you can send it to them, but you can send someone a link to the label so they can just download it right away. And you can tell the customer you need to use this within two days because it has the date on it. And that'll kind of light a fire under them to use it. If you tell the customer you have to do it, then because a lot of times people won't until you kind of imply that you have to use the label. So that that could work. Um, OK, da, 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 da. why is OK question? Why is my shop rating at four point nine, but my shop doesn't have star seller? 
I have both other badges too. I don't know. Um, that could, that's something you would have to contact Etsy about and good luck with that. Um, I, I honestly don't know. It could be that you're missing something. I mean, you could, the 4.9 rating is just the reviews. It could be that you're missing the earnings part because there's three parts to, to Star Seller. It's the reviews, it's shipping, and it's earning a certain amount of money within a certain time frame. So you might not have that third part and that could be what's holding it up. But if you go to your Star Seller dashboard and click on that, it'll give you more details about your specific situation. But it's not just the ratings. It, that's that's actually probably what's going on. So, all right, it is 2.59. I'm going to call it. And thank you, everybody. Please give this video a thumbs up, seriously, before you leave. I do appreciate it. And like I said, it helps. And send a friend. Like I said, don't send this, don't send this video to your enemies. Don't send it to your competition. Don't tell them about this channel. Let them watch the ones that are going to freak them out and they think they can make $10,000 a day. Let them think that. But send the people that you like to this channel because they will tell them the truth. Okay. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good week and I will see you next Tuesday right back here. Bye. And thank you, Bill. I always say, I always forget to tell Bill thank you. Thank you, Bill.